Dr. Krenti Farias here. She's visiting us uh, in Toronto for a month or so, all the way from India. Welcome. We're delighted Welcome. to have you here. And uh, Dr. Uh, Kranti Farias is a uh, is a PhD uh, in uh, history uh, mm -hmm. and also is an expert on uh, Jewish and Christians living in uh, India. And uh, I know you've written uh, and you've been lecturing, especially on uh, on Jews in India. Why is this an interesting uh, topic for you? Thank you, David, <laughs> for that introduction and. Uh, uh, well, you know, uh, when I was on a holiday to Israel, you know, being the holy land of Christians, mm -hmm. being Christian, I just thought I'd prepare myself to, uh, uh, to understand uh, the people of the book, which I thought what Christians and Jews were, and I got studying about that. My first interest was only on the Bene Israel, because they were the known Jews, the Bene Israel of Mumbai, Bombay. And uh, I, I, I started working on that. And as I prepared myself uh, you know, more, very, very systematically, very scientifically, I went through records and uh, books, which are in the Wilson College Library uh, and in the Ruparel uh, College premises, which the EJDC conducts. I, I found a lot of material talking about the lifestyle of the people and the reasons for conversion or the reasons for not being converted. So, so you got intrigued, intrigued after you went to Israel? You got intrigued with the topic? No, no, before. 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 And that's and what that's led where, you to go to, led Israel. Led to go to Israel. But tell us how Jews got to India in the first place. Well, according to the historical sources, they say the, uh, the Jews, the earliest Jews were the Kerala Jews, the Cochini Jews, who were already in Kerala trading during the time of King Solomon. Mm -hmm. So that was about 2,000 years before Christ. And uh, there are no, there's no written, written evidence at all about that. It's only oral tradition. But in the Bible, you get references to King Solomon's uh, merchants bringing ophir and uh, peacock uh, and um, silk and spices. So you know that there must have been so it goes a back to biblical times. Yes, it goes back to biblical times. And then there is uh, no mention about other Jews, uh, except these Jews, till we suddenly hear of a little group of Jews who are dressed like uh, the Maharashtrians, that is the very Marathi people of Mumbai. And uh, this was the family that I was going to be visiting in Israel. And they are known as the Bene Israel. And they call themselves Bene Israel, meaning sons of Israel, and not Jews. Now. One of the elders stated that when he was captured during the time of his service in the British and taken to Tipu Sultan in Mysore, uh, he was brought into the presence of the Sultan, Tipu, and uh, you know, he would have been probably put to death. But his mother asked him uh, to find out who this uh, gentleman was, uh, who the soldier was, to which he said that I am, the, uh, you know, I am uh, Samuel uh, the Waker. So, he says, I am a Bene Israel. Oh, then the grandmother said, he is our brethren. He, we are descendants of Ishmael, and this is a descendant of Isaac. You have to spare his life. And then he came back and he, you know, in, uh, he consecrated a synagogue in Bombay the first time. So that was the first synagogue. And these are the Bene Israel. Israel. Yes, and that is how. So that was only in the 18th century, but their history goes back to the very first century AD. They said they were uh, fleeing from the Holy Land when the tribes were dispersed, and accidentally or perchance they had landed on the coast of uh, Alibag. And uh, according to their tradition, Prophet Elijah breathed on them that survived this shipwreck. And there were seven men and there were seven women. That's a biblical number, I think. And th these were, this is the lost tribe. This is the lost tribe. <coughs> This is one of the lost tribes. And uh, you also uh, have some expertise on the Bene Menash. Yes. Why, why the Bene Menash? Is that, uh, is that the largest of, of all the groups? Or? No, no, no. Bene Menash is the most recent. The, the, the Meso Jews. Meso Jews, the okay. Meso Jews. Meso? Yeah. Meso Jews. That is, Meso means from Meso Ram, that is a state. East? Or Northeast. Or, or Northeast. 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 Northeast in the well, you were lecturing in Israel on the Meso Jews were you, a few yeah. years ago, correct? Yes. No, yes. no, no. On the Bene Israel. I lectured oh, on the Bene okay. Israel. Okay. At the Haifa University. Yes. All right. 
Yes, at that time I did not know about the Beni Menashe. So when I came back from the yeah. trip, that I heard of this group, and I went to Aizol to meet them. Okay. Which and is where again? Where? Northeast India. North and East how India. big a group is that? Oh, they're a very small group. This group of, uh, uh, they have uh, only about 30 years ago that they've started going back to Judaism. And uh, they said that one of their seniors got a vision, a dream, asking him to get up and go back to the homeland, make the Aliyah. And therefore, he informed the others of the village. And uh, they said there must be something deep down. We've always felt we are Jewish, though they had become Christians. Would you like to know why they become Christians? Yes. Because that was some deception there. Though I'm Christian, I must admit that. The Presbyterian and the Baptist missionaries who worked in this area, they had convinced them that, uh, you know, the, your book is similar. You have, you have the Old Testament, and that's your, you know, whatever you're learning in the Torah and the Talmud, it's the same that we are teaching. And this is the same book that is continued. Of course, it begins with the life of Jesus. But, you know, the poor people must have just lost track after so many centuries of being away from the homeland mm -hmm. and the persecution that they received, that they were convinced and that they, they embraced Christianity. But yeah. many uh, Jews, mm -hmm. Indian Jews, mm -hmm. never left their identity, never. In spite of the fact mm -hmm. that they were totally free always in India, there was never an issue of anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm they were accepted. And usually, mm -hmm. what happens in situations like that is that many, the majority, pass out, assimilate, and lose their identity and go into the mainstream. Mm -hmm. But this didn't happen. Mm -hmm. no, didn't that, that's, a, that's a good question. Yes. Let's take a short break and then maybe Cranty can comment yes. on that. Okay. We'll be back in just a moment. Yeah. <laughs> and is that, are we talking? Okay, okay, so we're back, and uh, Doris's question was, how is it that the... That they didn't assimilate. How is it that for thousands of years mm -hmm. that they held on to their identity? See, the... And it's the B'nai Is Israel. Israel, yes, yes. Based yes. in Mumbai. Yes, yeah, yes. Now, culturally, they assimilated. Culturally, meaning if you're talking about culture, meaning the dress... Food. And the habitation, yes, but not the religion. They did not uh, make a sacrifice. I mean, they wouldn't kind of sacrifice religion because uh, whatever they were taught. And the teachings, they were very fortunate that they got the Bible written for them in Marathi because they were already speaking the local language, Marathi. Dr. Wilson, John Wilson, a uh, Scottish Presbyterian minister who founded the Wilson School and College. He, with an eye, of course, of converting these people, uh, he had the book translated to them from Hebrew to Marathi to enable them to read and know. That was his contribution. But um, one of his missionaries says that it's very sad to say that we have not succeeded in getting any conversions except one or two. So they, they remain faithful. To their, uh, to their but, faith but the did it also have something to do with the fact that mm -hmm. it's mainly a Hindu uh, country and uh, not the Hindus are not uh, looking to convert the, the mm -hmm. Jews or, or give them a hard time? Would you say that's true? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, see, one thing is uh, Hinduism never thinks of uh, you know evangelizing or you know going uh, you know in that kind of. Uh, Everybody the same token, yes, they accepted yes, Christians, didn't except they? Christians and Muslims. No, Muslims also. And would, Muslims. Yes. So Christianity was always with the trust to evangelizing. Hindus, no, Hinduism is a, it's because it's a way of life, no? And the Jewish people found that their way of life was, you know, was almost the same. You follow the good teachings of your faith and you, you retain that. At its peak, how many Jews were there in Mumbai? 80,000. 80,000. And now? Now about 5,000. Where did so they go? So few. Yes. No, they started making the Aliyah, making the Aliyah, so they have gone back now. Many, many. And I think by the turn of uh, this, uh, I wouldn't say by the turn of the century, within the next 50 years, I'm sure there'll be hardly uh, a thousand left, uh, only the senior people, the younger people are of gone. Of gone but I'm still stuck on the fact that they maintained their identity and reached 80,000. The Indian Jews I've met all look totally Indian, with brown skin and dark right, eyes right. and dark hair, right. which means they intermarried. But they didn't lose it. They didn't lose their... I think some of them may have come to Canada, too. 
They did. Yeah, they, they, they did. I'm sure. We they did. did all over the world. Yeah. But can I correct you there? I met uh, this lady, your uh, uh, Annie Samson. You know Annie Samson? She's a Bene Israel, you in this uh, I've heard of her, yes. Yes. You know what uh, What she said? Where, the, where is Judaism? It's, it's a Semitic religion. It doesn't have to do with color. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, you, if, if it's, a, it's a faith that went sure. from the Middle East, from the Semitic, uh, being a Semitic religion, uh, what is color got to do? Don't you think no, those, who, not, yeah. those who went uh, to Europe, they would be the ones who would be not truly the Semitic people. They would have intermarried. I would put that counter question to you. Hmm. Yeah. Well, in a few weeks we're going to have uh, somebody on the show talking about the Jews of Ethiopia as well. So the Falashas are obviously uh, very dark skin. Um, we want to talk a little bit about a book that you are working on. Uh, and we've been rolling some photos. If we haven't, we'll roll some photos intermittently as well. Um, but uh, we're going to be back in just a moment and talk about this uh, this book. It was going to be basically a history of Jews and Christians uh, and some of the similarities that you... A working title. Can we say the word a possible title? Yes. <laughs> uh, is uh, the people of the book. Of the book yes, okay, yes, we're going to yes. be back in just a moment yes, with yes, uh, Dr. Cranty Fries. Hang in there. Okay, welcome back to Mensch Life. We're here with Dr. Cranty Faraya. So um, we are going to talk about this book that you are working on, which talks yes, about uh, Christians and Jews and the history in India. But yes. before we do that, we've got a few minutes. We wanted to talk to you about the Baghdadi Jews of mm -hmm. Bombay mm -hmm. and also the Murano Jews uh, in Goa, who yes. came from Portugal. Yes. So what Let's do you want to start? Let's start with the Goan Jews, because they came first. Yes. Um, when I was in Delhi, I heard a gentleman describing this horrific uh, treatment of the Jews, uh, which became an extinct community in the 16th century. And then he described the, the painful way that the, bo the bones of Dr. Garcia de Orta were exhumed and burned to the, uh, you know, as if they were being burned to the stake. That was the punishment that was normally given uh, during the time of the Goan Inquisition. Now, this is a kind of uh, inquisition was like the follow-up of the Jewish or the Spanish inquisition where the Jews uh, were hunted. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I went back, I just thought, let me just find out whether there was really a street or any hometown or residential area of these uh, so-called Marano Jews. And when I uh, looked into the archives in the, in the Panjim archives of Goa, I found there was in a picture a street named Chu Street, which is very close to this famous bomb, Jew Street. Jew Street. Okay. And which uh, is evidence that Jews came yes. with the Portuguese yes. when they colonized Goa. Yes. Because if they were traders and if they were uh, working on the ship, as any sailor, they would have come and in. And this doctor. I, yes, and this doctor was brought, Dr. Garcia de Orta. Krent, you, you said that the Inquisition followed yes. the Jews of Goa. Yes. It followed, no, it followed the Christians, and as a result of this Inquisition already being imposed by the Dominican fathers, the Jews also got the onslaught of this Inquisition because they were part of the same policy. So even in Goa, they in didn't Goa, escape? They did not escape. Therefore, there were no Jews left in Goa. It's kind of very extinct. I know there is the only references to that street, Jewish street, which is a very old... Uh, and it's also yeah. ironic because yes. a lot of Israelis go, especially after the army, yes. they go to Goa. Yes, mm -hmm. And they don't want to go home. They Why do they go to Goa? Just because it's a beautiful place. Beautiful place. It's an yes. island, there's it's the island. beach, yes. there's a... It's a, it's a beautiful... Uh, yeah, it's a tourist place, actually. Everybody likes to go to Goa okay. because of the beaches. So it's kind of ironic, it's ironic, isn't it? Yes, it's ironic, I suppose. It and the Baghdadi ironic. Jews, what about them? The Baghdadi Jews are the group that came in from Basra, from Persia, during the time of the, uh, you know, the persecution against them in the 19th century. So from Damascus, Aleppo, Damascus, they fled. Uh, uh, a few of them landed in Calcutta because the route was known as a trading route, but the bigger community came to Bombay. Uh, 
and they established themselves. The, the, the chief one among them being Abdullah Sassoon. So they were known That's as the Sassoon, thing. Sassoon Jews, are the Baghdadi Jews. Baghdadi is a place, the appellation as you see, but uh, Sassoon is a family name. And their contribution has been as magnificent as the Parsis to Bombay. You surely heard of the Parsi contribution, yes. the Tata endowment and all these big names. The Sassoons were big like that. They built, of course, synagogues for the Jewish people because the Bene Israel were poor. So the ones who really came out with the bigger synagogues were the um, Baghdadis, um, very close to his home in Fort Area. It's known as Fort Area, where the Knesset synagogue is. That was actually built by the, uh, Abdullah Sassoon. And are they still there? They are still there. They're functioning. Is still you a know that, that that meeting that they held, the Condolence Memorial meeting. Yes. Uh, recently, last year and this year too. For the uh, those who were, uh, you know, who killed? were killed, yes, that's in, in the Kabat, yeah. Kabat, Kabat House uh, couple. Right. Yeah, so that was actually the contribution was the Sassoon Dock was built by them in Bombay. It's a massive dock and uh, Sassoon Hospital in Pune. Mm -hmm. So a lot of money and they were very, very munificent in the donations because I came across records in the National Archives in Delhi referring to the grant of money the huge grants of money given by this Sassoon family. So they were very generous. Yeah. Now, I, I, I want to point out that um, much of the work that you've been doing over yeah. the last five years, mm -hmm. studying about the uh, Jews of India okay. and so on, is, is something you've been doing on your own. There's no, no funding from any institutions or anything like no, that. No, no, no. no. Just no. Your, this is your own this passion. This is my own passion, yeah. um, And now you're working on a project. Yes. And you'd like to um, publish a book. Yes, sir. Is the book written yet, or it's in? The book is written, but you know now the final touches. But otherwise, everything is ready, except the funding. So you know, I'm looking for a publisher now. So you need oh, a publisher. Well, I need a publisher. Yes, and tell I us, tell us what the book is about. It's going to be about the cultural uh, life, the cultural life of the both the Indian Christian and the Indian Jew. It's going to be only Indian Christian mm -hmm. and Indian Jew. So I talk about their uh, their uh, the, the life cycle. Basically, it'll be the life cycle from birth to death and the integration of the Indians in the Indian uh, Hindu society and also the integration of the Jews in the Hindu society because it has to be both ways Indian society but at the same time keeping their uh, social uh, and cultural uh, practices that I would do so for example I would probably talk about the birth uh, of a Christian would be the baptism ceremony. If I'm comparing it to the Jewish ceremony, I will show the circumcision and talk about the naming of the child. If I show the First Holy Communion, which is the next stage in a Christian's life, I would talk about the bar mitzvah and the bat mitzvah. So, so like see, that. there's parallels. Like five parallels. Oh. So my book will be of parallels. Your book actually. also yeah. reveals a country that in spite of the devastating poverty, mm -hmm. which is always an excuse yes. for mm -hmm. all kinds of things, mm -hmm. has never, has embraced people that were different. Other religions, other colors, other mm -hmm. faiths. Mm -hmm. And I think that it, the world as it is now that is being split into warring factions can learn a lot from what you're going to tell us in this book. I hope so. I hope so. This is the reason I hope the trust is that way, leading them to understand one world, one religion, because religion has to be in the heart of man. So we, 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 we should not be emphasizing about which God we're worshipping, because God is always one God. And uh, we have to be the channels of his peace. And through this book, I was just hoping to bring about that kind of a reconciliation and understanding a sense of tolerance, yes, yes. And are you that. available to talk, to speak to groups, to synagogues, to churches while you're here? Yes. How long more are you going I will to be, be here? here till the 4th of February, and I've been invited to be addressing the, the community, I don't know. Um, Andrea Spindle is arranging for me to address some community on the 15th of Again, January. Again, that's from know? the uh, Kulanu. Yes, from um, the Kulanu, yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Right. Yeah, so I would be available, and I would love to. Are talk you? You to were them. in the states last month, weren't yes, you? Yes, I was there. Right. Yeah, okay, yeah, very yeah, good. Yeah. So if if uh, if somebody wants to uh, connect with uh, Cranty, mm -hmm. uh, the email address is crantyfarias at hotmail dot com. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to connect with you for any reason or yes. to help you uh, publish this book. Oh, that would be great. That would be really nice if they could come forward because you know I, I assure them that the, it'll be worth their uh, what shall I say investment. 
It's more than a financial an investment. It is your you're helping to recreate right. from what was you know kind of half lost. And you sh and you, you have so much light to shed like on to. our history yes, that ha I've never heard before. Oh, starting with the thank fact you. that the Indian Jews were part of the lost tribes. Yes, yes that's, that's incredible. Right. Yes. Then the Inquisition. Yeah. There are so many facets yes, to this yes, that we have yes, to think about yes. and learn about. Yes. And then the conversion of the Mizo Jews. You know, you must have heard about the Bene Ephraim in Hyderabad. Uh, a rabbi couple had given this lecture, so I'm not going into that since I have not made a deep study. But uh, that also shows that there is the search for the lost Jews. And I hope, I truly hope, that the lost Jews will find their way back home. That's my dearest wish for them. Okay, and on that note, yes. we, we need to wrap up. So we want to thank you very much for, uh, for being with us. And again, uh, Cranty Farias at Hotmail.com. K-R-A-N-T-I, Farias is F-A-R-I-A-S at Hotmail.com. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Cranty. Until next week, uh, I'm David Grossman. I'm Doris Epstein. Don't forget to be a mensch. And shalom. Shalom. shalom.